Hi everybody, welcome to story time. My name is Amaris, this is Kalia, and today we have a very special story time. We want to dedicate today's story time to Bernard John Campanella, who left this earth far too soon. Kalia's grandpa on Andy's side. We already miss him very, very much. The week before he passed away, we got a package in the mail and it was a surprise. And it was a collection of books called Watch Me Grow. And so today we're gonna read one of those books. They were sent from Bernie. This one's called, I Can Grow a Flower. <laughs> and it's okay, I didn't start growing flowers until much later in life. So even if you don't know how to keep a flower alive, it's never too late to learn. <laughs> I'm learning now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can grow a flower. Yeah, everybody can learn how to grow a flower and much, much more. Pretty plants grow in the garden, but where do they come from? This shows the blossom, the flowers, the grass. You can have wild geraniums, roses, tulips, pansies, and so much more. Most plants come from seeds or bulbs, tiny seeds, bigger seeds, and bulbs. And each seed or bulb is magical. It's a whole new plant waiting to grow. I wonder what these striped seeds will grow into. Does anybody know what those are? <gasps> okay, these are acorn seeds and tulip bulbs and sweet pea seeds. But what are these? My favorite. We fill a pot with soil, gently put in one seed, then cover it with more soil and sprinkle water, water on top. We plant the mystery seed three quarters of an inch deep. We can plant extra seeds in other pots because some of our mystery seeds might not grow. I hope our seeds grow big and strong like these plants. Check this out, Kalia. Look, that's a sweet pea. Boop. And that's a calendula. Boop. And you can see they're growing underneath. And that's a cornflower. We put our pot near a window and check it each day. We keep the soil moist. Nothing is growing yet. The soil is warm and moist and we add water. We have a plant calendar. We pay attention to the days. Light and warmth, air, good soil. These are all very important. But look, <laughs> is something magical happening under the soil? The seed splits and a tiny root pushes out. Look on the pages and find the things that plants need to grow. Light and warmth, water, air, and soil. Yeah, kind of just like humans. After many days and many sleeps, we still can't see anything growing above the soil. The roots take in water and food from the soil, but then what's this? It's a tiny shoot. The seed goes up. We plant it near the surface so it doesn't have to go too far. That grows taller each day. The seed reaches the surface and leaves start to pop out of the seed. Soon, the seed shell will fall away. Does anybody recognize what kind of seed shell that is? Mmm. Some people eat them as a delicious snack. Okay, what's gonna happen next? When our shoot is big enough, we plant it in the garden. Our shoot is now a baby plant, just like you. We dig a hole. We gently take out our baby plant from its pot, press it into the hole and water it. Our baby plant has two leaves. Look, our plant is even bigger now. The stem is taller, more leaves have grown. Do you want your monkey? There you go. More roots have grown and there's worms in the soil. Worms help keep soil crumbly and full of good stuff for plants. So don't be afraid of worms. Then a bud grows at the top. The bud is the baby flower head. Watch out, 
Caterpillars, snails, and slugs eat plants. Uh-oh. And aphids and ladybugs? Helpful ladybugs go gobble up plant-eating insects called aphids, so ladybugs are good. And none of these are bad, let me just add. We want to keep them out of the garden, but they're not bad. We don't want to kill them. We have to find natural ways to keep them out of the garden, like spraying salt water or using coffee grounds, things like that. What creatures visit our plant? Oh, that was, <laughs> that was the question about these. Those are what visit our plant. And one warm summer's day, we see that our little seed has become <gasps> the tallest flower in the garden. It's a beautiful sunflower. <gasps> and you know what's in the middle? More sunflower seeds to plant and eat. And here we have lavender. That's daddy's favorite. Bees visit the flowers to feed on nectar and gather pollen. And they do this, they carry pollen from flower to flower, which helps plants make new seeds. Pollen is the fine yellow dust in the flower head that sometimes makes you go, achoo, achoo. Does it make you go achoo? Look at the cornflower. Butterflies feed on the sugary nectar in flowers and as they feed, they spread pollen, helping plants to make seeds. Some helpful visitors are hiding. Oh, birds like to eat seeds and berries. They help new plants to grow when they drop seeds. And there's the butterflies. Wow. The sunflower life cycle. Super tall sunflower. The seeds come out of the flower head. Then you have the root, which we started with, and the shoot, and the baby plant, and the bud, and it just goes like that. At the end of the summer, we collect seeds from our sunflower. We can plant the seeds next spring and grow sunflowers again. Oh yeah, it does feel like it's time for a nap. Thank you to Grandpa Bernie for this wonderful collection of books. There's a couple more. How does a butterfly grow? And the other one is, how does a frog grow? So maybe we'll get to those in another future video. We love you, Grandpa Bernie. Happy story time, everybody. Now go take a nap. We say bye-bye. 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 <laughs> bye-bye. See you next time.